I said good morning. Uh, friends, uh, we are talking about Indian education system and uh, it's very important subject and uh, let me take few insight as to where we are, where we need to go and what are the gaps and how do we bridge these gaps. So with that I'll just uh, have my 10 minutes with your permission sir. Uh, dear members from Indian Research Media, faculty members, guests and students, it's my pleasure to welcome you all and reflect upon Indian higher education system and the progress made so far to prepare leadership pipeline for New India 2022. We have last week heard about New India 2022. That means India becomes 75 years old. So it's an Indian 75 year celebration. So that's in the foundation of New India. For this 21st century, which is the 22, we are talking about 75 years. This is a century which is widely regarded as Asian century. Because Asia is in a dominating position today. And in Asian society, the three major focuses coming up, especially for India, cleaner, smarter, and faster. Cleaner smarter, faster. While the global economy is going through a volatile times and being plagued with multiple issues, India and China are expected to lead the world in terms of economic growth as well as pioneering research and development. India in particular, having emerged the fastest growing major economy, the intention of, uh, attention of entire world is focused on us. We need sustainable and inclusive governance model which is capable of lifting millions of people out of poverty line while maintaining the same cutting edge of R&D activities as well as innovation. It is imperative to continue the faster track, the hard economic growth to create jobs and thereby provide sustainable lifestyles to its citizens. We have to keep in mind the needs of tomorrow. Some of the key initiatives programs like Miss DC, Make It India, Digital India, Educate India, Scaling India, Clean India, with the aim to boost the manufacturing and enhancing the application of digital technology. The initiatives are all are different. They are all very different. Make It India, Digital India, Clean India, Scale India, all are different. But they are interrelated. They are interdependent. And this entire progress will give a quantum leap forward in productivity to compete the best in the world in terms of product and services we offer to the people. The foundation for the cleaner, smarter and faster India has already been laid down. Focus on digitalization, excess of technology, solar energy, low carbon emission, tree plantation, pollution control, and Clean India are some of the initiatives at the grassroots levels which the government is taking as of now. The future is focused on marching fast forward on artificial intelligence, robotics. It reminded me of PM slogans in 2014. He said, IT plus IT is equivalent to IT. IT plus IT is equal to IT. That means intelligent talent intelligent talent plus the information technology will be India's tomorrow. To gear up the demands of New India 2022, the higher education system needs to double up the pace to take a quantum leap forward to produce leadership pipeline. India higher education system is the third largest in the world of, as of today after the China and the US. More than 316 central and state universities, 129 deemed universities, and more than 90 private universities. There are more than 22,000 colleges and the institutes in which almost 90 lakh students pass out every year. Most of these corporates, especially we people in the HR domain, feels and are unanimously agree that there's a very second percentage of the population is really employable. If I share the data with you, based on my experience over the last decade, uh, 
and the McKinsey report also say the same thing, that 25% of engineers, 15% of finance and accounts professionals, and 10% of other general category candidates are suitable for the jobs that Indian companies are inspiring and ready to offer. And this is a major concern. Even if you look at the faculty to student ratios, as compared to global average of 15.1, 15 is to 1, our is 26 is to 1. So that means there's a big gap in terms of connect between the faculty and the students as well. There are concerns, and these concerns are academics only talks and defines the what part. That means the knowledge. The how part is often left to the experiences of the students. The difficult part is to sustain these progress of once that you get the job and how to sustain that job because you may get the job because of your communication skills, because of your attitude, but how to sustain that job, that how part gets missing because nobody teaches us onto that part. The how part includes uh, working in teams, understanding the needs of others, communicating effectively with others, understanding culture, making decisions in ambiguous situations, managing emotions, managing relationship. I think most of the academics doesn't cater to these kind of requirements. The challenges of the campuses is, as of now, I understand and appreciate that campuses are also having some issues. They are over-centralized. They are too much over-centralized. There are a lack of institutional autonomy and accountability as well. There are too much of regulatories which fails to maintain the standards despite entry barriers to the new institutions. The focus is mainly on theory, not much of in a practical experiences. Knowledge and skills taught are similar, neither adequate, nor fully relevant, nor updating, nor challenging enough and as a result, there's a mismatch in education curriculum vis-a-vis -vis industry requirements. There's a lack of understanding for the industry-specific growth because we have the same set of norms, same set of syllabus, same set of curriculums, but organizations are all different. We are trying to sell the same material to each and every organization, even if they are different. We have to, as a result, there is a job placement is lowering year after year. Most of the corporates are trying to put their own learning mechanisms, setting up their own academies, uh, learning academies at their campuses, and putting too much of focus on induction programs uh, so that the students get ready, industry ready. Uh, there's a lack of quality mentors, coaches, and the guides at the academic institutions. Sorry to say, but the profit is the main motive, especially for the private colleges today. There's a quiatic and unplanned expansions which is happening, and there's nothing concrete or just planned expansions which is expected. If you see uh, Delhi to Merit, if you go down Delhi to Agra, if you go down to Delhi to Greater Noida, there's a mushroom of colleges. Almost the way they come up, the way they get closed also. So they, every year I find 300 plus institutes keeps on adding and around 400 plus gets closes down also because of the quality issues. But today the generation Y and Z are very, very important role to play in India building tomorrow. India has a young population and demographic dividend and it will continue for next 20 years till 2040. Generation Y and Z today are very confident. They are much more knowledgeable thanks to Google Baba. They are ambitious, they are tech savvy, they are achievement oriented, they are individualistic, they are effective communicators, they seek out new challenges, they desire to have a meaningful and variety of work, they want to be included and involved, they want to have a flexi working and they want to maintain work-life balance. They have an entrepreneurial mindset. Off late we have observed that the job tenure for the youngsters is, has been reduced to two to three years at the maximum. Whereas in our time, we used to work for STD, that is service till death. Once we get the job, we said no need to look outside. But today, the maximum time, which I see for the youngsters, if he completes two years, he says it's a long time I've been in the organization. 
But there are concerns for the youngsters as well. There is a quick fix solutions. They look for each and every problem. They are unable to cope up the pressures, especially the real hard life of the pressures. They struggle for long-term commitments. They are too impatient to sit, listen, and discuss the issues for a long on one agenda. They lack respect for the fellow members, colleagues, and the team members as well as for the family. They are not intentionally, but somewhere the grooming or the parenting is responsible for all these things. They are running for quick successes, so ethics are compromised most of the time. I think the need of the R is very, very important. First and foremost thing is that we need to do the expectation settings. Somewhere we find when the students come from academics to corporate, the expectations are very, very different. But once he gets into the corporate, he feels the shock of his life. That expectation settings are very, very important. Even when you pass out from the schools and get into the college, the expectations are very, very different. And when you get into the colleges, you see a big shock there also. I think these are the important junctions wherein we need to educate and make sh that do the expectation settings. A lot of parenting, a lot of uh, in friendship influence, a lot of teachers' role come to in a play to do the expectation settings when they are in the colleges. We need to have a partnership between the government, academia, and the industry. We need to upgrade the courses curriculum to reform the stage and stay relevant in the organizations. The real-time experiences, success story sharing is very, very important. Powerful uh, story is a very, very powerful media. The failure story is much more important, which we forget most of the time. We do talk about success stories, but we don't want to talk about the failure stories because we are feel scared and feel exposed and vulnerable. I think the learning which comes from a failure story is much more genuine and authentic and open and transparent. Uh, we need to focus on building the attitudes and the skills. We need to work around e-learnings and online tutoring. We need to work on willingness to learn, unlearn and relearn. Mentoring, coaching, incubation is very, very important. The faculty development programs are very, very important. Let them go to the industry, spend six months in the industry, and come back and tell students what is required by the corporate world. So that is the real time experiences sharing is very, very important. Subject matter experts, the lectures uh, has to be relevant. Inviting the FDIs, 100% FDIs in higher education program is welcomed and is required. In future, the job creating sectors will be information technology, digitalization, communication, telecom, healthcare, and wellness, renewable energies, media and entertainment, international and trade laws, e commerce, sports management, and data analysis. These are the kind of jobs which will be coming forward for the students. And due to automation and introduction of robotics, some of the jobs like accountants, auditors, Taxation experts, architects, reporters, teachers, traders, intimidators, sales representatives, all these kind of jobs will go away. So we should not pursue and prepare students for future for these kind of jobs. Because these are all operational, mechanical jobs. And with the digital India and augmentation and automation and online contents coming forward, this is not going to be really sufficing the requirements. And towards the end, I would say there's a strong need for the shakeup and the change to move out of the comfort zone. We need to be flexible, adaptive, and agile to meet the demands of new India. The opportunity will be in abundance. Jobs may get redefined, but I can assure that we will have a bright and secure future ahead. We do talk about VUCA most of the time. That means volatile, uncertain, complex, amb uh, ambiguous. But we can also assure you that VUCA is the solution as well. Have a strong vision, have a build an understanding, bring in clarity, and also be agile. You will have the success. Towards the end, I will just say a couple of couplets from Dushyant. He said, he's a very good poet, and he said, Mere sine mein nahi, to tere sine mein hi sahi. मेरे सीने में नहीं तो तेरे सीने में ही सही है तो आग लेकिन आग जलनी चाहिए हो गई है पीर पर्वत सी पिघलनी चाहिए इस हिमालय में से कोई गंगा निकलनी चाहिए आज ये दीवार 
पर्दों की तरह हिलने लगी है शर्त लेकिन ये थे कि बुनियाद हिलनी चाहिए हर सड़क पर हर गली में हर नगर में हर गांव में हाथ लहराते हुए हर लाश चलनी चाहिए सिर्फ हंगामा खड़ा करना नहीं है मकसद मेरा सिर्फ कोशिश यही है कि सूरत हाल बदलनी चाहिए सूरत हाल बदलनी चाहिए थैंक यू